on, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Sharpool Gaming's one and only podcast, The Deep End. I'm your host, Shane Walters, and today we have a plethora of things to talk about, me and you. We, we have a lot of things we need to dissect and talk about today. This is uh, the official Shark Pool post E3 convo show. Whatever. Um, so basically we're going to be talking about the things that happened during E3, some notable games, and uh, really how this is changing the industry. Okay, it's very interesting to think about that. Um, you know, so let, let's, let, without further ado, let's dive right in. Um, so, the first thing that I want to bring up is how good this E3 was. This E3 was probably one of the best E3s in recent memory. I mean, I, I'm thinking back two years, this is the best in three years. Um, because last year's was really kind of like a stale, you know, nobody had their games ready to show. So here's, you know, some cross-gen games that no one's really excited for. Um, and then the E3 before that was when, you know, the new consoles were ramping up and, uh, you know, they were trying to get footing and sell you a console. Um, and I'm not sure what happened the year before that. So my, my memory is a little vague, but, um, this is the best E3 in recent memory without a doubt. Uh, let's just go through a quick list of some games that made a lasting impression on me personally. Um, Fallout 4. Holy shit. Whole, oh, man. We'll, we'll talk about that later. Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, and that is Gorilla's new IP. Uh, it's it's like post, post-apocalyptic. post It's like after the post-apocalyptic. It's weird. It's, it's awesome, though. It's so cool. Um, Uncharted 4. Uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake. Awesome. Uh, the Last Guardian, uh, South Park, the the fractured butthole, B U T W H O L E. It's it's awesome. I love those games. Uh, Star Wars Battlefront and Cuphead. Cuphead. Yes. If you have not looked up what Cuphead is, do yourself a favor and look up the video right now. It's amazing. Um, so you know those were just the notable games that I I saw. And uh, I'm really anticipating uh, their release and, you know, following these games. Um, but let's talk about the, the, the individual conferences real quick. Um, these are going to be real short. These aren't going to be super in-depth. But Microsoft, uh, let's start off with them first. Um, so Microsoft had a very good show this year. They had an extremely good show, much better than years past. And uh, I think that they had the single biggest piece of news out of E3 this entire year. Bigger than anything. And that was their announcement for backwards compatibility for the Xbox One. That that's just that blows my mind. That's so awesome. And nobody saw that coming. Like, Sony didn't see it coming. We didn't see it coming. Um, so Microsoft really put on a great show. And, uh, you know, they're... They're more and more convincing me that I need to buy an Xbox One. Um, you know, they didn't show any Quantum Break or Scalebound, but they already said that that's going to be at uh, GamesCon, I think. Yeah, so they're going to show those. They they didn't even show all their games. That's what's crazy. They had such a good show, and they didn't even show three of their biggest games. So that just shows how strong their ecosystem is right now. That that just proves like you know. Here's these games that are coming out really soon, and that's that's something that we'll talk about with Sony, um, Xbox and Microsoft. They're like, you know, here's these games. Here's how awesome they are, and they're coming out really soon. And then those other games, we'll talk about those too, but later. So their ecosystem is in a very good place right now because they've got releases coming, and uh, you know, I'm 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 just looking at the numbers here, and like Microsoft looks like they're gonna take this holiday running away with it. They are going to dust Sony with like console sales and games coming out and stuff. So, I mean, that's something to look out for. Uh, Microsoft is making this an incredibly interesting uh, first half of the console generation. Uh, moving right along, we're going to go into Sony now. So Sony went on later that day. Um, I didn't know what to expect from Sony because like they, they're really, they, they've got this mystique about them. They, they, They've been so quiet for so long on all these studios. You know, the, the, we didn't hear about Gorilla forever. We haven't heard anything from Sucker Punch, Sony Bend, um, you know, S Sony Santa Monica. I know they're working like some like X Dev stuff, 
But you know, Sony, they, they keep selling consoles, but they've got like, there's really not a, a huge game for them. Like Bloodborne is probably the biggest PS4 game. And that's crazy. Because like we had Infamous Second Sons, Killzone, uh, Bloodborne, and like I can't like I guess Little Big Planet. I don't know. Whatever. I mean, I think Little Big Planet's kind of run its course. Um, but you know, that's personal opinion. But yeah, like Sony's got this weird like misty mis like like there's like, like no one knows what they're doing. So I mean, this this conference was kind of like that. Here's what we're working on. Let's open the doors on all these projects and show you what's going on. Um, so, but they had a really good, really good show. Game wise, and 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 tempo wise, they were moving it along. They didn't dwell on one thing too long. I didn't think. Um, but they, I mean, they took everyone's hopes and dreams of games that we thought were never gonna happen, and they were just like, here, you want you want Last Guardian? We're gonna start with it. You want fucking Final Fantasy VII remake? You got it. You want Shimu Three? Sure, why not? So, you know, they had a really, really good show. Um, the games they showed, but, you know, cross-comparing to Microsoft, you know, when, like I said, Microsoft has a very healthy and very good ecosystem right now. Sony is kind of, kind of not really. Like, Sony's got all these great games in development, but they're not coming out for like another year, two years, who knows? Who knows what Sucker Punch is working on? Hopefully we'll see them at Gamescom, that'd be awesome. But, you know, we finally got to see Horizon, which was amazing. Um, you know, Guerrilla Games is so talented, and all they've had been able to work on is Killzone. And I was just, oh man, that, that game looks like it's everything I've ever wanted from that studio. Just give them creative control over whatever, and just let them go crazy. Because I'm sure they hate, they, like, they're not, they don't hate, but they're tired of working on Killzone. And they, they want something else. So, Horizon was awesome. Uncharted 4, of course, you know, amazing. But it was really weird because they ended it on a weird note. But, oh well. Sony, it was a very good show. Sony definitely won with the games they showed, but Microsoft is still like, you know, I, I'd, I'd say it, it's, it's very close. It's not lopsided like it's been. You know, Sony's kind of been dominating, and I think Xbox is finally, you know, making its way back up. Uh, moving right along, let's talk about Nintendo. Yes, yes, I know. Old Nintendo. Old, old Betsy. Now, Nintendo is a very interesting thing, okay? Because if you go on the internet at all this past week, you will see people are up in arms. They are, they are so mad. They, you know, N Nintendo did not deliver a lot of things that people thought they should have. You know, uh, it's they had a very weak um, Nintendo Direct presentation. But, but, okay, so we, we need to bring perspective to this. Okay, so they, they've got Nintendo Directs all year. They show off games all year, you know. And then when it comes to E3, people expect big announcements and, you know, big things to happen. And, you know, it rightfully so, because E3 is this big stage. And, but Nintendo backs themselves into corners during their, you know, Nintendo Directs throughout the year. So they back themselves into these corners where, you know, they could show you the same thing again. But, you know, it's like, why would you do that? So, I mean, I was a little disappointed that they didn't show any Zelda you know, they, they've, they, I know they said beforehand that they weren't going to show anything, but you know, you never can tell about these companies, but they really had nothing besides Mario Maker. Mario Maker was the only thing that caught my interest. That looks awesome, by the way. Um, but I'm not, I'm not a Star Fox guy. It didn't look that good anyways. Um, not a Star Fox guy, you know, it, it, it was just weird. It was a super weird thing because Nintendo seems to be in a transition period. They're caught in between, like, supporting the Wii U and then, like, building this NX, you know, trying to get that working. They're, they're in a very odd position right now, and Nintendo is trying to find its footing into what, what it's trying to do. Because, you know, the NX seems, that I feel like they announced that too early, but that was kind of a reactionary announcement to their mobile game, you know, thing. So they were just trying to let people know they're still making, you know, consoles. But it, they're just caught in a transitional period, and, you know, Nintendo will be back. Back, you know, 
doing good things, but oh man, it, it was like almost painful watching that. It was bad. Um, so let's move on to third parties then. So third parties, we're talking about Ubisoft, EA, Square Enix. Um, who else was there? I, oh, and Bethesda. Oh man, how, how could I forget Bethesda? Okay, so let's start. Let's start in uh, ascending order. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and say EA and Ubi were were okay. They were okay. EA had Star Wars Battlefront, which was awesome. Oh man, that game's gonna be great. And then Ubi, uh, they had South Park, which was awesome. And they, I don't know, they. UB is just, they don't make the games, they don't make my kind of game, but that's fine. I totally understand. They know their demographic and they make, they tailor their games to that. Um, but Battlefront was awesome. So, I mean, like, you know, I didn't really pay much attention to those conferences. Um, UB had more stuff on, you know, Tom Clancy stuff. Uh, Assassin's Creed and then EA, you know, with their typical fare. But let's bring it to Square Enix. All right. So, if any of you need any backstory... I'm an incredibly, I'm, I am a huge Square Enix fanboy, or I was. I am a lapsed, <laughs> a lapsed Square Enix fanboy. Um, because when I was growing up, I played Final Fantasy 7, 8, 9. Anything with the Squaresoft symbol, I was all about. It, it, it didn't matter. Those are the games I played when I was a kid. So Squaresoft, back when they were Squaresoft, was like, was the best. I, I love them so much. Well then, you know, recently, eh, eh, you know, that's a conversation for another day, but their e e E3 conference. And it was weird because, you know, coming from, you know, me loving everything that they've ever done, um, you know, when I was a kid, I was watching this conference and there was just nothing that I was interested in. And like, Square Enix did it very, very, I don't know, because like, I, I, it was very businessy, very formal. Um, it was kind of weird. It was almost like old Konami, uh, Konami E3 presentations. This is weird. Uh, the dude with like the circle head. I was like, well, okay, what? Um, cool. <laughs> um, so no Final Fantasy 15 though. Like, there was no Final Fantasy 15, and there was no Final Fantasy 14. Okay, that's a huge one right there. Because we are a week away from the very first expansion for Final Fantasy XIV. And there wasn't even a clip or some information. I mean, I understand they have those, like, those streams, like, a month ago. And they was talking about, like, extra stuff with the expansion and stuff going into details. But, like, you're a week out from your first expansion of your biggest game. And you don't even mention it? And you don't even mention the sequel in your biggest franchise, the F Final Fantasy XV. I, I was, I was, I didn't know what to think. I was like, okay, Just Cause Three, awesome. Hitman, awesome. Tomb Raider, okay, whatever. Um, you know, Star Ocean, I have no interest in. Um, you know, it was weird. And then something else that caught my eye is like, I was just like, where is Dragon Quest? You know, like. I've heard many times before that Square Enix is trying to uh, bring Dragon Quest to the West. You know, make it a thing in the West. But in order to make Dragon Quest a thing in the West, you have to show it in the West. Square Enix! Oh my god! Like, I love Dragon Quest. Dragon Quest VIII is one of my favorite games of all time. So, like, I was half, half expecting to see maybe Dragon Quest XI. You know, you don't even have to show anything. Just show the sim, like, the logo. Whatever, man. PS4, Xbox One. Like, that's all you have to do. But, you know, th I just, I don't get it. Because they, they want to make Dragon Quest a thing in the West, but they refuse to show anything Dragon Quest related. So, I, I don't know. It's it's confusing because they're, they're, sometimes they're frustrating and they're, you know, they're working back. Their reputation is kind of getting back to where it should be. But, you know, they, they, still, they still make stupid decisions. And I'm just like... I don't know what to do with you. You hurt my heart so much. Um, so let's talk about the biggest thing though, and that is Bethesda Game Studios. Bethesda, whatever man, whatever you want to call it, Todd motherfucking Howard, our Lord and Savior. Okay, so, so Bethesda, first show, uh, or first conference of the show. 
shut it down. Shut down E3. It's over. It, okay, it's done. Bethesda show, goes to, on stage, it shows Doom. Doom looks awesome. Um, then they showed the, 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 the map editor for Doom, which looks even better. Um, then, you know, Elder Scrolls Online, and um, I was very surprised there was no Wolfenstein. No Wolfenstein, but, you know, whatever, that's fine. They're, they're fresh off a game last year, so they're probably in no shape to show that game off. But Fallout 4. Woo, baby. Oh, my God. Fallout 4 is, it's everything that I've ever wanted. It is, it's crazy to think that they took one of my favorite games of all time and added to it so much that I was, like, I was speechless after that presentation. It was unbelievable what they've done with that game. The crafting system, the the modifications for weapons, they've enhanced that. They've given every item in the world purpose. And like, oh man, oh man. I cannot explain to you the, uh, the amount of excitement that I have. Actually, I can. I made a video about it last night. Um, <laughs> you can go watch that. Um, but man, Bethesda, was awesome. Shut down E3. It's over. Go home, boys. You can't do anything, all right? You can't compete with that. Fallout 4 this year is going to be, hands down, my game of the year. I, I haven't even played it, and I'll let you know that right now. Because Witcher 3 was probably my game of the year before this. Nope. No competition. This is going to be a nuts ending to the year because we've got Fallout 4, Star Wars Battlefront, oh man, Tales of Zestiria, the month before, it's, it's absolutely crazy. So, you know, so this is what I kind of got out of this conference though, okay, so let's kind of kind of bring it back together, bring it all together. Um, this is kind of something that I've, I noticed uh, about the E3 conference, and it kind of coincided with something that I've been saying kind of all along. Um, so it's basically... This E3 was incredibly strong, but there's a reason for that. Because I feel like the developers of these games needed time to understand the software and the hardware and, you know, how to make games for these brand new consoles. You know, people were complaining, um, you know, because gaming has been in a kind of a stagnant state for, you know, a year and a half, two years, since at least since the new consoles have come out, you know, it, because people were used to the end of the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360, the end of those generations, the best games always come out towards the end, you know? That's when developers understand the hardware. And, you know, we come from, you know, the best games uh, to the, you know, a brand new console where people don't know how to make games for it. It's cross-gen, no one knows what they're doing. But basically, this is the time that developers finally understand and they're ready to show you what they've been working on. You know, you had to give them time. So, you know, th this is something that it's also coming with the delayed games. You know, last year there was tons of delays. Oh my gosh. All these games are being delayed. So that's what turned last year into the barren wasteland that uh, it was. The, all these great games were being pushed back for, you know, polish reasons, for content reasons, whatever. Um, but these delayed games are coming to fr uh, fruition now. Fruition? Yeah. Uh, sorry. <laughs> the, all these delayed games are finally appearing, and, you know, the, we're finally getting these. So that's, I, I, I just, you know, we were in such a stagnant state of delays and bad games and people not understanding how to make games, and I, I think we're finally coming to a head, we're coming to a point where all those delayed games and all the developers are finally putting out quality products that are tailored to the new hardware. Um, so th this is... This is making gaming heading into a very good direction because last year, oh man, oh man, you would have thought the industry was on fire because everyone was just like, oh man, we're heading to, you know, we're buying services instead of items, you know, like, I think gaming has finally got its shit together and is heading in the right direction again. You know, we, we've got great games on the horizon. We've got, speaking of horizon, yeah. Um, you know, we've got great games coming up. We've got people working on good games. We've got games coming out that are great. Um, so I think gaming as a whole is a much better, is a much better place than it was a year ago. And that's something that says about 
E, uh, that's something that E3, it says about E3, you know. Um, that's what, I just feel like this conference always rejuvenates the industry. And it turns it into, uh, an, instead of a, you know, a cesspool of negativity, it, it, it kind of helps bring positivity back to gaming and it turns the whole industry around. You know, it, it kind of, it's like the classic reboot button. You just hit it. And we're back to normal. You know, it's we, we just see what's coming. We see what people have been working on. They see our reactions. And it's just, I just feel like E3 is so healthy for the industry as a whole. So, that's pretty much it, though. I mean, Microsoft, oh, man, they're on the comeback train. I'm calling it right now. Xbox One will, man, I'm thinking they're going to outsell PlayStation 4 this holiday. I, without a doubt. Unless Sony's got something they haven't shared with us. Xbox, I, I, they're on the comeback train, baby. Choo choo, motherfucker. Ah, so with that, that is Sharkville Gaming's post E3 convo show. Uh, wait, right here on the Deep End Podcast. Uh, but let me know in the comments below what your favorite conference was and your personal favorite game of the show. Personally, my game of the show was Fallout 4 and or Horizon. I'm not really sure which one it would be. But let me know what you thought was awesome, what you thought was bad, um, and also what your favorite game was. So uh, with that, my name is Shane Walters, and thank you guys for watching.